Hey guys, what is up? And welcome back to my channel. Another day, another drama. And today we're going to be talking about what Colleen Ballinger did and what James Charles didn't do and why everybody is talking about them. If you have not seen my previous video titled Petty Page and Jake Yancey Cancelled for this, I will link that as a card up over here as well as down in the description down below. So definitely make sure you go and check that out as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump on into the drama. So first we're going to be talking about Colleen and what she did that has people talking. On April 28th, Adam McIntyre uploaded the video titled Colleen Ballinger, Stop Lying, with the description, This is a video I never ever thought I would have to make and my heart breaks making it. My intentions are to tell my side of the story and disassociate myself as all I'm seeing online is theories about what is happening and what I have or have not done. So in this video, Adam goes on to call out Colleen about a couple of things. One is about a gift that he was sent to him from her, as well as what was going on behind the scenes for her Miranda Sings Twitter. So it's come out that Colleen in a live stream offered to send Adam a set of underwear. Now these, from what I can see in the live stream, were brand new out of the package, not worn, anything like that. But she did offer to send them to Adam, who is a minor, a bra and panty set. Now again, these were not worn by Colleen. They were new out of the packaging. So they weren't like used, they were new. But she did not just send them randomly. She did ask him in the live stream if he wanted them. And he said yes. So for him to go into his video and say, I can't believe that she would send these to me. My parents found out and they took them away as soon as they came. They thought it was super inappropriate. He was the one that asked for them. She offered them in the live stream. Although, I mean, do I think that she should have? No, but she did. And he said, yes, send them to me, please. Now, do I think that they should have been offered to begin with? No. If this was a guy offering to send something like that to a underage female fan, people would be dragging them like crazy. So the fact that people aren't really talking too much about this, it doesn't matter the fact that they were new and that he said, yes, send them to me. As a grown adult, you should not be sending underwear to a minor, period, point blank, 100%, should not be done. Now, in this video, Adam did say that his parents took them away right away as soon as he got them and they can't believe that she would send them. That's just terrible but it has come to surface that there was actually a live stream, I believe that he did, where he was wearing the bra on the live stream. Now I'm not gonna show that picture here because he was like 13 at the time. I don't feel comfortable showing that picture on my channel. I did see it on Twitter. I know I have seen it in another video. So if you want to go out there and try to find that, that's on you. I'm not gonna show that on my channel. So clearly when he received that package, he did get it before his parents and used it in a video or a live stream, and then his parents took it away. Now, if you're gonna come out and make claims against somebody like this, then you have to make sure that you have your facts straight 100%, because now people are saying, well, you said that your parents took them away right away, you have them on in this video, you lied about this, what else are you lying about? So as soon as somebody can poke a hole in one story that you're telling, they're gonna assume that everything else that you're saying is false. Now in this video, Adam also goes on to say that he was actually the one running the Miranda Sings Twitter account for a while. Colleen asked him if he would do it as an internship, and then that could lead into an actual paid position for that. Now, if this is your character's Twitter, the character that you made up and you decide that you don't want to do that Twitter anymore or do that character anymore, then you just need to stop that Twitter or end that character. You shouldn't be using somebody else to run that Twitter because that's supposed to be your character. And this character is still making you money, but yet you're letting somebody else run it and not paying them. But that's my opinion. Now, first, let's get into the fact that she was having him do this as a minor, unpaid. You're calling it an internship. Okay, internships, I don't care. That needs to go away because everybody deserves to be paid for any kind of work that they do, period. So the fact that you, Colleen, as somebody who has millions of dollars, couldn't afford to pay this 13, 14, 15 year old money to run this account for you is just gross to begin with because you have the money to do it and you chose to have them do it for free because they were a fan of yours. 
That is just wrong. You should not be using your fans for free labor. If you don't feel like running that character or running that account anymore, then sell off the rights to that character to somebody who wants it because clearly you don't have the desire to want to run that anymore. Instead of having somebody do it for you for free, just get rid of the character. Now, Adam did say that Colleen would log into the account and approve everything before he posted it to make sure that it wasn't too offensive. So basically what I'm hearing is that Adam was most recently the creative mind to the Miranda Sings account, and Colleen just went in and said, okay, yep, that's fine, I'll approve that. Yep, that's okay, put that out and then reaped all the benefits from all the money that that character makes, and then turned around and gave nothing back to that intern. Really? Moral of the story is, is that if you're going to ask somebody to do something for you that makes you money, then you need to be paying them accordingly and not using them as free labor because they're a fan. And no one, and I mean no one who is an adult, should be sending anything inappropriate or that could be considered inappropriate to a fan that is a minor. Like, come on, you guys, where is the common sense? All right, let's go ahead and jump on over to the other drama that is James Charles and what he didn't do. So if you haven't seen James Charles's latest video, it is a video with Trixie Mattel where they do a Get Ready With Me drag edition. Now this video followed the second episode of Instant Influencer, and after each episode of Instant Influencer, he uploads a video on Tuesday of something correlating to that episode. In his previous video, he did a full face using a beauty blender only, which was taken from inspiration from Kaylin's video in the challenge where she used the beauty blender to do a full face of makeup. So since this week's episode was all centered around a drag transformation, he invited Trixie Mattel, who was a guest judge on that episode, to do a collab where they just do a basic get ready with me and do drag makeup on themselves instead of each other, and they just sit there and talk and have a good time. Now, what the issue is, is that people are believing that James and Trixie have broken quarantine to be able to film this video because of this clip from the actual video. You know what the tea of quarantine is to Katya and I, because I've been doing the YouTube videos and then filming with Katya. It is really an odd feeling to get in drag and not leave your house. Really? Yesterday I was like, I had to film during the day and then I had a stream at night. It's like sitting in full drag at my kitchen dining room table, eating a salad like a normal person. Like it was weird to be in drag. I felt like a sim. Oh my God. It's like not a sim. <laughs> I love The Sims. Do you love The Sims? I love The Sims. I used to play it for hours as a kid. It's amazing, yeah. At first when I watched the video, I didn't even catch this. And then when I was re-watching the video, I was like, wait, did they just say the weird thing about quarantine? Because I originally thought that James had already pre-filmed these, which means that this video would have been filmed back in January before there was any talk of quarantine at all. So this video had to have been filmed somewhat recently. Now, I did reach out to both James and Trixie to get a clarification on when this was actually filmed, but neither of them replied back with a comment. Now, I'm sure that they did take precautions and double check their health to make sure everything was okay. They checked their temperature, they did sanitization, they did everything that they needed to do to be able to film together. But some people are like, okay, why are these YouTubers thinking that it's fine for them to go out and do collabs and stuff like that when everybody else is trying to stay at home? Well, Responsible people are trying to stay at home and not go out and protest, and YouTubers are going out and doing collabs. I understand that, yes, this is how they make their money, but also other people who can't work right now can't just go out and do collabs with people to make money. I honestly just don't understand that when this competition was filmed, why they just didn't film this collab right after Trixie got done doing the show. Now, I don't know if maybe James didn't have this as an idea to do for content or what, but I don't think that they should have really got together and did it. They could have did it over a Zoom. They could have did something. I totally get that doing it over Zoom wouldn't be as impactful or have the same energy as it is filming person to person. But when you're doing stuff like this during quarantine, you're showing all of your fans and people that follow you that, hey, look, we are getting together and filming stuff. It's fine. People don't know if you're taking this seriously or not when you're doing this because you didn't offer any kind of statement saying, hey, we decided to film this collab. We did health checks before we started. We did health checks after. We made sure that we had sanitizer everywhere. We made sure we Lysoled everything down. There was no kind of clarification when you released this video. So I think that if you had some kind of clarification with that, then this wouldn't have happened. All right, let's go ahead and get on to the other drama that James Charles addressed during this collab, which was the DragCon incident. 
Now, if you remember anything, a few years ago, James Charles went to DragCon and he got called out for cutting the line. Well, he finally addressed that in this video, even though I feel like he did address it before. I swear I saw something about him saying, oh, I was getting mobbed by a bunch of people. But this is what he had to say in this video. I'm either meeting people or I'm doing press, so I'm like, just gone. And right. If you want to meet Trixie, you have to cut through a line of 100 teenage girls and they will kill you. Mm, don't get me started on cutting the lines at DragCon. You know, people, people still to this day bring that up about me, still. Would you like to clear the air? Yes, I would love to clear the air. So two years ago, I got invited to go to DragCon and I was supposed to do a meet and greet. This is when I had like a million followers, I think. And I woke up th that morning feeling like really nauseous. Just like, it was not a good day to wake up at six in the morning to get into full drag, to then it go and meet 500 is. people. So later on, that day, like right when it's about to end, I notified like the team that I was working with and I was like, hey, I would really still love to go and just pop in. Like, can I still go? And like, oh my gosh, yes, of course, like we'd love to have you. And I got there and started getting mobbed. Like it was like crazy. So as soon as I got there, they gave me a full security team to walk me around. I wanted to see a few different drag queens and stuff. And the security team that was with me brought me to the front of the lines so I could meet the queens, get a photo and get out. And listen, I get it. Like even I like don't like cutting lines, but the reality is you have to be safe and you have to be smart. So they wanted to get me in and get me out because that is gonna start a problem. Like that is when kids start lining up or asking for photos or crowding. And then that's when the people in line get angry. That's when people get hurt. That's when people get trampled. And it was never my intention to hurt anybody or to make anybody feel less than. But still to this day, that scandal follows me around the drag community. I've heard that before. To is clear the air, three years later, I still do not think that I'm superior to anybody. I don't think that I'm superior to drag queens. Literally just needed to get in and James Charles at DragCon punched a teenager, confirmed. Oh, I mean that for sure Jake happened. Jake Beyonce is quaking. <laughs> now, when I heard this explanation, I was like, wait, that sounds very, very familiar to something else that I heard him say in the past. Now you heard him say in this video that he had around a million subscribers and he was getting mobbed. Well, I went back to James's No More Lies video that he released after Dramageddon 2 happened and this is what he had to say in that video. For those of you who may not be familiar with Coachella, I do want to quickly clarify the different passes just because it kind of is important to this whole situation. VIP, although VIP, is still very, very open to the public. Artist passes, however, are passes that you can not buy. The only way you can get a hold of them is through a brand getting them from the actual festival or through having a personal connection to one of the artists or bands that are playing. It's in a very, very highly secured area that is not open to the public. Along with artist passes though, there's also something called a performer pass and backstage passes and a lot of other things that can keep you more protected. Keep in mind, weekend one, I did have an artist pass. Weekend two, I had a VIP going into the situation. When we walked into weekend two with me and my friends on Saturday, April 20th, and Sunday, April 21st, we noticed that there was a major, major difference in the crowd. We were in the VIP section and I started getting mobbed really, really quickly at a super unsafe capacity because as many of you guys know, whenever we stop to take a photo, kind of other people tend to come and it just turned into a big situation and it honestly was not safe. So right there, you have James saying that at weekend one of Coachella, he had an artist pass, which offered tons of security, tons of safety, but then went back weekend two with the VIP pass, which offers a lot less security and safety. Now, at this point in time too, James had, I believe, 16 million subscribers versus when he went to DragCon and he had 1 million subscribers. So he had 16 times the amount of subscribers but yet he was getting mauled at DragCon and he was getting mauled at Coachella. Now I did see photos back in the day of James Charles at Coachella that year where he's literally standing by himself and nobody is around him. Unfortunately, I can't find those anymore, but if anybody has them, please let me know where they are. But I know that I saw him just standing against the railing and doing nothing and nobody was bothering him. I know that there's also a video of him stopping to sign somebody's phone case and you can't hear anybody screaming his name. You can't hear people like yelling and crowding around him. So I don't know if I believe this whole, I was getting mauled thing at Coachella. I was getting mauled thing at DragCon. Because you have to remember too, at Coachella, there are very, very big name A-list celebrities there. Now I understand that they probably do have personal security. They do have artist passes, and stuff like that. But there's always a way for people to get around things. Now, do I believe that James had fans there who were crowding around him? Yes. Do I believe that he was getting mauled at an unsafe capacity? I don't know. 
I mean, I have seen the openings of Morphe and stuff like that, but those are advertised things saying, hey, come do a meet and greet with James. If you want to meet James Charles, come here. Those are free, opposed to Coachella where people are paying thousands of dollars to go. So obviously, if you go to a meet and greet at a mall, which is free, you're going to have a lot more people there to meet that person than flying across the country and paying a few thousand dollars to be able to go to some concert. But that's everything that I have for today's video, so I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think it was inappropriate for Colleen to send that gift to that underage fan, or do you think that people are blowing it out of proportion? Do you think it's wrong for Colleen to ask her fan to be an intern to run her Twitter for her Miranda Sings account? Or do you think that's fine? What do you think about the whole situation with James Charles and Trixie Mattel breaking quarantine to do a collab? Do you think it's fine as long as they made sure that everybody was safe and healthy? Or do you think that they should have done it over Zoom or figured out another way or wait to do it at a later date because of the quarantine? What do you think about James Charles addressing the DragCon scandal? Do you believe that he was getting mauled and attacked? Or do you believe that he's just trying to use that to save face so that people will finally drop it? I'd love to know what you think about everything down in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. Also, if you're new to my channel, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could hit the big red subscribe button and hit the bell icon and set your notifications to all so you'll be notified of every time that I upload a new video. All right, that's everything for today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!